In this video, we're going to talk about how to calculate the mode using our software. Uh, I might cover a bit, so in the video description, I'll have an outline of everything I cover, plus links to allow you to skip ahead uh, in case you want to skip ahead. So in a previous video, I think this might be part three of summary statistics. In part two, we kind of went through every all the other, you know, the mean, the median, the range, the length, the minimum, the maximum, all that sort of thing. But I left out the mode. And the reason why is R, for some reason, doesn't have an easy function called mode. Um, so first off, yeah, let's load up some data and get everything started. So I'm going to do new script. There's a new script here. The console is still there. Windows, tile vertically to get everything organized. So now here's the console, and here's the script window I'm going to be using. Uh, let's just create a little data. So I'm going to call the first little data uh, x, and we'll just say it's the value of 1. So what's the mode of 1? The mode of 1 is just 1. Um, just to kind of have this backup, we're going to have y equal to a string. A string is just kind of a character or a list of characters. You know, it's like um, when you loaded data from a CSV file, you usually had a header. And the header, you know, you notice was a name. That name is just a string. I think we call it character in R. Uh, and then I'll call this, this other data uh, z, and I'm going to assign it to kind of a vector of values. So one, two, three, and so on and so forth. Uh, you know, when you find the mode, the median, you'll probably be finding it over this long column of values, this long vector. All right. So you would think just to do mode. So let's find the mode of x. Actually, first I've got to load these values. Select them. I run the line here. Okay. So now we got x is loaded up. X is loaded up. Y is the string string, and then Z is the vector one, two, three. So you'd think, what's the mode? The mode would just be X. You would think you'd just call a function called mode, uh, put in the thing you want to find the mode of, but what does it give you? It gives this thing numeric. So what is mode Y character, and then mode Z numeric again? So obviously mode is not giving us what we think of the mode. So what does the function in R mode do? Well, um, R calls modes. Uh, basically, if I did a question mark and then mode, and it opened up the web page um, for R documentation for mode. And mode gives us the type of storage. So uh, with programming languages, they have they consider data of different types. So you usually have numbers uh, or integers. You often have floating points, and then you have strings. So going back to R, I don't think R makes a distinction between an integer like 1, 2, 3, and a floating point, you know, 1.0, or you know, any kind of decimal placement. So the mode of x, it was just a number. So the mode or type of data it is is just numeric. Uh, and then string, the mode of this value the mode of the object y is just this character or the type data type that it is so character so what is the function for mode well r doesn't have built into it um, a function that finds you the mode over a vector so what we have to do is a couple lines of code which i'll show you right now so how do we do this um, first off we got to load some data so that's what this code is uh, it's loading, assigning a variable called x to this vector. It goes 1, 2, 2, 2, 3, 4, 5, all through up to 9. So clearly the mode, that is the value that uh, occurs most frequently, is 2. Um, so how do we get r to confirm that or to give us that? So first let's create uh, this vector, this va variable called temp. So uh, uh, temp is quite intentional. It's just a temporary vector. Uh, the name could almost be anything, so long as you change what comes after. So for now, let's just call it temp. Temp is assigned to table, and then as vector x. So what does as vector do? As vector um, is actually not even important to this. So this this function here is going to work for even a metric. So as vector parentheses x would convert a matrix, you know, like uh, an n by m shaped object, uh, into a vector. Um, since we're dealing with a vector, it's kind of unnecessary. But uh, if you're trying to find the mode of a large data set, you know, that's like multiple columns, that sort of thing, then this might be useful. But 
leave it as vector. Uh, table, what does table do? I should probably show you what table does. So first off, let's run this. So what is temp reveal? So temp, the first row here, uh, goes row by row and, and sorts all the unique values in the list. So if you remember the list, it was um, one, two, three, all the unique values are one, two, three, four, all the way up to nine. Had these been like reorganized, so let's say it was like nine, one, two, three, four. So I'm redefining X. The only difference is I'm bringing nine to the front. So you can see nine is now in the front, where before it was at the end. So when we do temp table, So the first row is just sorting all the unique observations. And then the second row, uh, what the second row is doing is it's counting how frequent each of these values occurs. So it's kind of like a count thing. So one occurs once, two occurs three times, three once, all the way up to nine, each occurring once. This top row is a header, so it's treating these things as like character or names. Uh, and then here, these are numbers, considered numbers in R, and it's just counting how many times they occur. And you know, if you don't really care, you probably could have just went straight to the description and taken the code from there. But if you do care, this is what's happening with the table function. Um, and as you can see from this row, we, this row tells us what the uh, mode is. It's the highest number of all these values. So three is the highest count. And so the value that's associated with this highest count, the three, is the mode, so two. So we need a, a line that then returns the value on the first line associated with the highest count. So how do we do that? We do simply the following. So name, I'll explain what each of this means in a second. And then temp is equal to max temp. So I'm going to run this code now, run in the line. Oops, I think I misspelled something. Oh, sorry, the function name is actually names. So when I run this code, it spits out the name of all of the modes. So this vector, like we said, had only one mode, the number two, and so it spit it out here. So what's happening with names, temp, and then here? So the first part, names, temp, what is that? I'm just going to run it here. Names is... Uh, lists the name of the first row of our table here. So one, one, two, two, three, three, or and whatever else we had in the vector. So if you have something else, you'll have something else. Uh, and then this next line here is kind of a conditional statement. So when temp is the maximum value, uh, when the this value is the maximum value. So when temp double double equal is like a if or, is like a true false statement. So when this value is the maximum, so when temp is the maximum value temp, so that would be three here, it's saying return the name of that. So it says return two. Uh, so this whole line is kind of a conditional statement. It says return the um, the header label the value from the first row, conditional on that value being having the highest count, that is saying it being the mode. So I'll give you another example. Let's call this thing x2. So x2 is going to be this whole vector again, 9, 9. So now we have three values of 2, three values of 9. So there's two modes, and then I'm just going to add in something crazy like, uh, let's say, 30, 30, 30. So x2 has three modes, 2, 9, and 30. And let's see what happens. I'm going to rename the first part. Oops. First got to assign x2 to that vector, and now I could run the temp line. Great. So you can see the top row are all the values, the unique values in x2. 
and then the second row counts how frequently those occur. And now let's return the mode. So I'm going to just run this line, and it should spit out the three values that are now the mode. There you go. So I hope all that was easy and clear. Uh, why R doesn't have a built-in function that finds the mode, like maybe MOD or something, I don't know why. I couldn't tell you. But you can see it's just two simple lines to find the mode. If you have any questions, just send me a message. Hope you have a good day. Bye.